Welcome to the Rent to Rent Success Podcast, the only podcast entirely dedicated to helping you achieve rent to rent success. We talk about the ethical way to get you started in property without buying it. This is our place to inspire each other to believe bigger, to be bolder, and to be game changers for good. Property investors and sisters Stephanie and Nikki Taylor are your guides on this exciting ride. Let's start up the engines and get ready to fly. Hello, hello, hello. It's Stephanie here. Welcome aboard episode 50. Yeah, 50 of the Rent to Rent Success podcast. So excited to be here. And today, We're talking about our businesses in the year of WTF 2020. In this part two episode, I'm going to talk about the businesses where we're buying properties. We usually talk about rent to rent in here. I'm often interviewing other people about their businesses. So I'm kind of excited talking about our businesses and our our properties, our property investments today. If you're listening when this episode goes live and you have been on the fence in some discomfort with fence poles sticking into your bottom and you're thinking about joining us in Rent to Rent Kickstarter, now is the time. On the 21st of January, 2021, at midnight, our special offer will end and the price will go up significantly. Right now, you can join for a heavily discounted, never to be repeated, crazy good value price to get your 2021 off to a flying start. So if you do want to join, if you want to get your first deal, if you want to get started in property, go to renttorent.com slash last chance. Get in before that door closes because once it's closed, that that'll be, that price will no longer be. Okay, let's dive into today. I'm explaining what's happened in our businesses and I want to acknowledge first of all that to some people what we do is small fry and for others it's unbelievably good and that's okay. I know that it's all relative. I can only talk for what's happened for us, which blows my mind. I honestly had no idea that property and business success were available to me until five years ago. And that's what makes me passionate now about sharing how it can totally change your life in a short period of time when you go all in. And it's open to anybody who wants it and wants to make the moves to get it. And I do all of this, not on my own. I'm with my sister and business t- partner, Nikki Taylor. And you might be saying, who? Uh, because Nikki's usually behind the scenes, so you might not know her. So if you'd love to know who, who Nikki is, then do listen to episode 30, where Nikki comes on the podcast to talk to me all about her and to tell you all about her. And there's also a video of that episode too. It's at renttorentsuccess.com slash. 30. So if this is the first time you're coming in, I'll just give you a very quick overview of our businesses. Our businesses have three parts. Our rent to rent HMO management business called HMO Heaven. We've got our rent to rent training company called Rent to Rent Success. And we've got our portfolio of owned properties, which are owned in a number of different limited companies. So I talked about HMO Heaven and Rent to Rent Success in episodes 48 and 49. So here today, I'm talking about the businesses we have where we're buying properties. So first of all, let's talk about 3SS. It's we exchanged on this property on the 20th of February, 2020. So actually during last year, and this is a four unit conversion in Newport. It's made up of one small one bed flat, two almost studio flats, and one studio flat. And what I mean by almost studio is that they have an open plan lounge and bedroom, but they've got a separate kitchen. So it's almost a studio, but not quite. The property was converted into four studio type units back in the 1980s. And although the units had individual council tax accounts, They were heated by one combination boiler and shared the same gas, electricity, and water supply. 
And the units are all on the same freehold title because we like that multi-unit blocks all on one title. I'm going to talk about that more in next week's episode, which is all about multi-unit blocks. Got to listen to that one. So the units were in various states of repair. At least one of them needed shower room repairs. The worst one meant a number of the units had no kitchen or shower room. So it was just arranged as three rooms. So a full refurb was needed. So what was these were this was the refurb that we did. And when I say we, it's Nikki, Nikki manages all the refurbs, roofing and guttering repairs. So she's given me these notes. So Nikki, I hope I'm getting all this right. We did roofing and guttering repairs, replacing rotten floor joists, split the utilities with the utility suppliers. That was mammoth. Upgrade plumbing and electrics, installing new combi boilers and splitting all the supplies. Upgrade the fire detection and protection systems, installing new stud walls and an external window to create a shower room. A strip out existing kitchen and shower rooms and replace with redecoration and lay laminate flooring throughout. Okay, so that, that was the work that we needed to do on it. We bought this one. I just want to say a quick word on how we bought it because that was interesting. We bought this one using an exchange with delayed completion. Typically, when you buy a property, you exchange contracts and complete the sale very shortly afterwards. An exchange with delayed completion is where you exchange on a specified date and then complete the date on an agreed date or date range in the future. Usually, it's m- more of a distance of time in the future. It could be months, it could be years, it can be what's ever agreed between buyer and seller. So the exchange with delay and completion is sometimes called a no money down strategy because typically you don't need a 30% deposit. So you don't need that 30% lump sum up front like you would on a standard buy to let property. And typically you won't need a mortgage either. It's known as a creative property strategy, which allows you to buy a property over time without having that 50K or whatever the amount is in the bank to start off with. So this refurbishment took 10 months to complete. It shouldn't have taken that long, but 2020 was a tricky year. And I'm going to come into the challenges that we had on this one. And it will cost around £65,000, which includes over £8,000 paid to suppliers to split the utility supplies. I tell you, that was a biggie. So I'll write these in the show notes. I'm going to list them out. Um, I've had the figures over from Nikki. So that £65,000 is made up of split, splitting utilities, 8300 plus. The electrics was 6300 plus. The plumbing was 12600 plus. The building was 36500 plus, And the dressing was 1200 plus because... The dressing was very minimal because we decided to let these out without furniture. And so the dressing was minimal, therefore. So uh, that's a total of £65,182. The biggest challenges, let's get into what the biggest challenges of refurbishment were. You can see by the date that we completed in February, uh, as you know, we went into lockdown at the end of March. So the three biggest challenges were delays due to COVID, which meant the usually lengthy utility splitting process took even longer than it should have. Also, we had scarcity and increased costs for building materials and needing to have fewer contractors on site because of social distancing. On these things, things always come up that you haven't budgeted for. So this is the stuff that you can't see prior to starting the works that comes up as you move forward through the works. And for us on this project, we had a spongy flooring, which concealed rotten floor joists that had to be replaced. And we had to keep and reuse some of the existing kitchen units and existing laminate floor. But in the end, this all needed to be replaced with new. And the splitting the utilities process, the process can be long anyway, but there were so many delays, partly to COVID, partly to do with, I know that one of the utilities, Nikki was explaining, the four flats within this building, they had different numbering than we had. And so they couldn't, when they come, they refused to do the work because it wasn't the flat that they had listed. So we had to get all that organized with Royal Mail and 
the utility companies. So, and nothing with utility companies is fast. So top three tips from Nikki when undertaking any project is consider multiple exits for your project, plan for things not going to plan. For example, we knew the splitting of utilities would be delayed. So we requested our plumber to do some extra works to enable the units to continue to work off one supply. And this meant we were able to push on with the works and we weren't delayed as much as we could have been. And we could have, we, you know, so we could tenant properties ahead of the supplies being split. Number two is have a detailed, well thought out budget, including a decent contingency. We'd recommend at least 10% contingency. As annoying as our challenges were, they were all covered within the contingency. And of course, number three, if splitting utilities, contact the suppliers and start the process as soon as possible. I mean, even sometimes even that doesn't help you, but it's good to start as soon as you can. So here are the numbers for this deal. And again, these will be on the show notes. I know if you're like me, you prefer seeing things, if it's numbers wise, written down. And afterwards, I'll explain what this means in practice. Just to give you the website for the show notes, it'll be rent to rent success.com slash five zero for episode 50. So the agreed completion date, you know, I said it's exchange with delayed completion. Our agreed completion date is within five years of our exchange date. The agreed purchase price is £160,000. So I bet if you're in London, you're falling off your chair right now because we've got four small units for uh, £160,000. And that's another thing that I'll be talking about next week again in our multi-unit blocks episode about another of our purchases. Option fee so is £16,000. So this is an amount of money that we paid up front. When you do an exchange with, it's not an option fee, but... It's an upfront payment. When you do an exchange with completion or some of the other creative strategies, you can pay as little as one pound to do the deal. In this case, we've paid 10% of the purchase price as a one-off payment upfront. And then we give a monthly payment of 320 pounds a month. And after five years, we have 124,800 pounds left to pay. And I'm going to talk about a little bit more about how all that works, why we've got this monthly payment, why we've got this option fee. But for now, I just want to move on to the monthly income and the cash flow. Hello there. Did you know we've got a complete library of free videos, blogs, podcasts, free training and guides? And the best thing is it's fully searchable. I know you're going to love it check it out at rent to rent success.com slash blog right under the big banner image there's a search box so that whether you want to know about contracts whether you want to know about letters or analyzing deals it's all there for you at the touch of a search box at rent to rent success.com slash blog see you there soon Now, if you've heard us talk about this property before, you might have heard me talk about a higher income. So we've reduced this now. The units are slightly smaller than we had forecast. So our monthly income, and we know this now because we have the top two are completed. So the monthly income is £1,800 for all four. The monthly cash flow, that's after we take off the monthly payment of £320 to the owners, and after we take off maintenance and running costs, the monthly cash flow is £1,426. Then the yearly income is, that's the gross rental income, is £21,600. And the yearly cash flow after we take off the running costs is £17,112. And you may have heard me talk before about the power of five and the magic in five years, everything that you keeps on compounding. And the five-year gross rental income is £108,000. And the five-year cash flow after the running costs is £85,560. So let's take that £85,560 and we have spent £65,000 plus on refurbishment. So when we take the refurbishment costs off. Over five years, we earn on this property 
after all the costs, after all the refurb, £20,000, £20,377. And that's what I love about property. And it, it still blows my mind. Why didn't I know about this? For a relatively small investment to start off with, we've secured this property and been able to refurbish it to a high standard so it's a lovely place for people to live and make some money. Now, in the first five years, because we've invested in the property, the amount that we make will be lower. And then after that five years, we could earn the property for 5, 10, 15, 20 and beyond within in trust. And the cash flow will be extremely healthy. So a fantastic, fantastic property. And I'm actually living in one of these flats right now. And I'm recording this episode for you in the flat. So make sure you listen to the episode where I give my personal review of 2020 in a future episode to find out more about that. Let me turn now to what's happening in this deal. What is this exchange with completion business? What are the different payments that are involved? So what's really happening is that we're paying for this property over time. And during that time, we don't pay rent and we don't pay interest on the agreed price either. And at the beginning, you notice we didn't pay a 30% deposit, which would have been £48,000. What we paid up front was £16,000. That's one £6,000. And then we pay £320 each month. And then at the end of the five years, we take the purchase price of £160. We take off the £16,000 that we paid up front. We take off the £320 times £60 that we've paid every month. So that's £19,200. And that leaves us a balance to pay of £124,800, which is amazing because it means that we bought this property over time. There was no interest. There was no rent payments. We're just contributing all of it to the 160. But you might be saying that all sounds great, but what do you do in five years when you need to pay £125,000? Good question. And I'm going to come on to that. What I want to talk to you about first is getting access to these deals in the first place. You can do these deals where you pay as little as one pound up front because it's whatever's agreeable to you and the seller. So for us, it was £16,000 was the entry point instead of £48,000. And when I was working as a contractor at a bank, I might have heard this and thought, well, I don't have £16,000. So I couldn't do this. And now I can. And the only difference between me now and me then, just a few years ago, is knowledge, action, and resourcefulness. When you get the knowledge and you take the action, you create opportunities that attract resources to you. It absolutely happens. And it feels unbelievable when it does, but it will happen for you as well, if this is what you want. We don't actually seek private investors, yet almost every week investors contact me through social media or through our websites to find out more about investing with us. And what I want to say here is that your resourcefulness too will increase once you get started. No investors would have been contacting me, you know, five years ago when I was just giving up my job to start in Rent to Rent. There are lots of ways to raise money depending on your experience level and your attractiveness to investors. And here are just a few ideas of how you could get started. You could use bank borrowing or an overdraft. You could use cash flow from your business. You could release equity from your home. You could save up. You could do with family and friends. There are so many ideas. I've only touched the surface. We live in one of the richest countries in the world. Resources aren't the problem. Resourcefulness is the issue. And it's something you can develop if you don't yet feel confident that you could raise £16,000. I wanted to open the door to the fact that it's something you can do when you develop skills. That was a huge mind shift for me because I just thought that things like this didn't exist for people like me. So it is open to you and there are ways to do it. But first of all, we need to open our mind to it and just know that it's possible and then gradually start to believe in it and become the person who can attract it. 
So let's now move on to the question that you're probably thinking, but what about at the end of the five years, how do I pay £125,000? So here are some ideas. You'll be able to take out a conventional mortgage. Now, for us, it's likely that the property value will have increased due to the refurbishment that we've overgot, undergone and also the time that's gone past. You could use your own funds or raise private finance to fund the purchase in cash. And then you can repay your investors either in interest or in equity. That means a share in the property. You could sell the deal on to another investor if you don't want to buy it, so long as the exchange with delayed completion contract that you signed with the seller is assignable. Assignable means that it's transferable to another buyer. And you can use cash flow from other assets, such as a rent-to-rent business, and save those funds over the period so that you can then purchase the property at the end of it. Our plan is simply to mortgage the property at that point and take out a mortgage to pay off the £125,000. The deposit has already been paid, so there won't be a lump sum to pay. And it's likely we'll get a loan for 70% of the value. And as I say, it's likely the value will the, of the property will have gone up. But even if the value of the property hasn't gone up a penny from now, we'll be able to get uh, 70% of 160, which is £112,000. And that would leave us to fund £13,000 to pay for the property. But in in next year's review episode, I'll be able to give you information about um, the valuation and the refinancing. Oh no, sorry, in five years. <laughs> in five years, I'll give you that information. But next year, I'll be able to tell you what the valuation is then. So really, really chuffed by this, this deal. And you know what? Buying this way gives you the flexibility to buy more properties. Imagine if we had to save up £48,000 for each one, it takes so much longer to build up our portfolio. And I know that you might be curious, how can you find properties like this? Or you might be skeptical that property owners would want to do deals like this. It is somewhat perplexing. Why wouldn't an owner want to get paid in full upfront for their property as they would, you know, in a standard property transaction? And there are many reasons why property owners may prefer an exchange with delayed completion or another creative strategy. They may want certainty because putting your property on the market is very uncertain. Sometimes sales fall through and it can be an emotional roller coaster for sellers. Sometimes it might be that no one is prepared to pay the price the owner is looking for on the open market. And you might be able to offer the price they want in five years or seven years or more. The circumstance for the couple who owned this property is that they have a portfolio of properties they're approaching retirement and they want to sell off their properties on a schedule. So not all in one tax year. And they also want certainty and no hassle. They are fair and they're property investors. And we were able to agree a price with them, which both they as the sellers and we as the buyers agree is fair value. One important thing about this is that we want to work, we want everyone we work to to be delighted that they work with us, whether that's landlords, whether it's investors, whether it's tenants, whether it's our Kickstarter stars on our programs. We want them all to feel great about the deal and we want to feel great about it because we'd love to buy other properties as they sell them on to. So it's not, whenever you're negotiating something, it's not just about that single transaction. It's about creating a relationship that's win-win because relationships are more valuable in every sense of the world. You can't put a price on feeling good about what you do, feeling good about what you stand for. So the next question that people often ask me when I'm talking about this deal is, well, how did you find it? Well, actually with this one, the sellers found us because we've been sending out our rent to rent letters to landlords since we started in 2016. And so when they came to sell, they knew of us. They'd heard about our work from other landlords and they got in touch. So do send your HMO landlord letters. It's a phenomenal strategy. We devoted a whole episode to it in this podcast and you should definitely listen to it. I'll put the link in the show notes 
you can also see it at rent to rent success.com slash 19. That's one nine for episode 19. So to get started yourself in it, how can you do it? Be aware of it. Be aware of these creative property strategies. Be able to offer solutions that work for people. A lease option or exchange with delayed completion will work for everyone. And rent to rent is a great strategy for finding those lease options. As part of our Kickstarter program, we explain how to simply incorporate it into what you do. And if you'd like to join us in Kickstarter and get your year off to a flying start, go over to renttorentsuccess.com slash last chance. It's your last chance to join us before prices go up at midnight on the 21st of January. It's a fantastic program. It's a brilliant community. I love the people there. That's one of the joys of my life is that amazing community of Kickstarter stars that we have. I know you will love it over there. So I've loved this one. Let me know if you're enjoying these slightly different episodes. And until next week, have a great rest of the week. And remember, believe bigger, be bolder, be a game changer. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like the links for anything mentioned in today's episode, or if voice is not enough and you want to see us on video too, you can find all the show notes and lots more at renttorentsuccess.com. That's rent number two, rentsuccess.com. If you've enjoyed today's episode, we'd super appreciate it if you would take a few minutes to review it in your podcast app. Remember, we'll be donating to our B1G1 charities too for each review you give. Until then, believe bigger, be bolder, be a game changer.